We have a story tonight about a young woman from one of the poorest corners of the Western Hemisphere who has risen out of poverty thanks to in part to an Alpharetta dentist and his family. 22-year-old Anselma Ortiz is from a small town in the highlands of Guatemala here south of Mexico. That town is called Santiago Sacatepeques. It's a village outside Guatemala City where most of the girls uh, work in the fields like their parents, farmers who live on about a dollar a day. You can see the, the patchwork of the farms right there around the town itself. And Selma's life, though, took a different turn because she stayed in school. Hi, Anselma. Hey. Michelle and George McMaster. Good to see you. Mucho gusto. Dr. Mack to thousands of Alpharetta children are big supporters of a charity called Cooperative for Education. Which for 17 years now has given children like Anselma Ortiz access to textbooks and computers and a way out of Guatemala's crushing poverty. In my case, I had to help my mom to go to the market and sell different type of vegetables and some flowers as well. Yeah. Do you realize how extraordinary it is, how well you speak English? Oh. <laughs> Uh, kind of. <laughs> the McMasters and their children have traveled to Guatemala several times to see the work in action. The impact of, of uh, providing books and computers to children who have zero, we're not enhancing a, a library. We're providing the very first books they've ever had in their lives. And it's also been pointed out that sometimes it's the first book the family has ever had. The gratitude of the children is overwhelming and lasting because they and their families invest in the success. We're seeing a change, you know. Joe Berninger and his slow. brother Jeff quit the corporate world to establish co-ed, but brought their business savvy with them. We, we found that in all of our work over 20 years that if you give people something for free, they don't appreciate it, they don't involve themselves in it. So the families pay about a dollar a month for a set of four textbooks. That money goes into a fund, and at the end of five years, there's enough money in the fund to start replacing the books. And it works. 120 communities have replaced their own books at least once. A blessing for Anselma and thousands more like her. What kind of a job do you have now? I'm doing customer service for an inter international company uh, every single day and I take calls on the phone. The McMasters and their staff welcome their honored guest with a banner and a bed of pine needles, a Guatemalan tradition. And what Anselma learns here, she's eager to take home. It's a really good experience that you can improve yourself and actually you can support your family and you can be like an example in your town. She is that. The average family in the Guatemalan Highlands has six children, and it's the boys, not the girls, who typically get any education at all. And successes like hers are changing attitudes. And, and by the way, English is Anselma's third language. She and her family speak the indigenous Mayan language, Cachiquel, at home, hmm. and Spanish in the city. She's come a long way. Yes, very impressive young person. And I have to say, you know a little something about Guatemalan education system because you taught in Guatemala I for did. a time. For a couple years, 25 years ago, so I'm no expert, but uh, the fact that they have these people have some skin in the game in this program, yeah. I think makes a big difference because there are a lot of well-meaning charities that, that don't really have that kind of lasting impact. And we have more on Cooperative for Education uh, on our website, myfoxatlanta.com. Changing lives. All right, yep. thanks so much, Russ.